it's so easy to understand how pre-modern people would have seen them either as a manifestation of the divine or something made by the divine. But even with our modern sensibility where we understand why they form, I think that when we see one, whether we're lucky slash unlucky enough to see one with our own eyes, something in our bodies, I know at least for me, really responds with awe, really, with awe. I mean, they are darkly numinous for sure. They really do call up just this kind of awesome power that we cannot control. You know, when we're thinking about it psychologically, one of the things about it that jumps out to me is how easy it is to ascribe a kind of consciousness or intent to a tornado. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because it appears and then it moves. It seems to have some autonomous ability yes. to propel itself uh you know so so it's it's it it seems like a thing you know an entity that's that's coming mm -hmm. to wreak havoc and destruction and of course it kind of meanders wantonly i mean you don't know where it's going to go which as you said deb you know they can often predict the path of a hurricane but they may be able to say it's likely that a tornado will happen given atmospheric conditions in a certain area but once the tornado forms, they don't know where it's going to go because they, mm -hmm. they zigzag all around. And uh, so, it, so it really feels like a manifestation of the kind of impersonal power mm -hmm. of the divine. Yeah. And that it can manifest so suddenly and intensely mm -hmm. that they, they seem to come out of nowhere. Uh, it's a very nice day. And then there is a tornado that these atmospheric conditions uh, create. And the fact that it, it moves through the environment right. gives it this sense mm -hmm. of autonomy and consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why does it go left? Why does it go a mile to the right? And it seems so purposive mm -hmm. exactly. in our meaning-making mm -hmm. process. So um, the word tornado comes from the Latin tonare, which means to thunder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and tornado, as we've said, is this vortex structure, and it's vast amounts of air and water and earth and objects are kind of swirling around. And it gives us this sense that it lives and breathes, and it moves matter mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and out of the vortex, things are mm -hmm. drawn in and cast out at violent speeds. There are sometimes, after a tornado, people will see blades of grass embedded in a telephone pole. Wow. Because at the certain speeds, things that would normally not be wow. missiles are suddenly have this enormous amount of power. But foremost, it's a vortex that dissipates that it breaks things down, mm -hmm. that it grabs structure and rends it into pieces as the air is moving up and down. Mm -hmm. So this enormous power to, to destroy, to break down into component parts, cut a swath through the world. Mm -hmm. Not we, of course, focus on homes and farms, a swath through a forest. Yeah. Yeah, there's an area near me a couple of years ago, maybe not last mm. summer, but the summer before, it was like tornado watch, tornado warning, whatever. And I was like, what, what, am, I, what am I gonna do with that? You know, it's like, I'm gonna go to the basement. So I sort of ignored it. But the next day, there's still a, a, an area of trees along the roadside not far from me where the trees have just been sawed in half. Mm. We had a tornado down here near mm. Edenton two summers ago. And Rockahawk, which is an area. And uh, again, just these enormous old trees just split yep. like, like mm -hmm. ribbons. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, the, again, awe <laughs> it was the you, feeling. You know, Joseph, you were talking about, you know, how it, it looks like they move with purpose, with mm -hmm. uh, a purpose that's not clear to us, but uh, nevertheless. And it's, it's so easy to understand how pre-modern people would have seen them either as a manifestation of the divine or 
uh, a pro, you know, something made by the divine. I mean, I think it's a, mm-hmm. a really great example of, you know, what, what we think of one of the, the functions of myth, uh, you know, not psychologically, but uh, just, just in terms of explaining cosmological events. But even with our modern sensibility where we understand why they form, I think that when we see one, whether we're lucky slash unlucky enough to see one with our own eyes or, or, or even just scrolling through social media and we see an incredible uh, dramatic uh, video of one, something in our bodies, I know at least for me, really responds with just... Um, but with awe, really, with awe. I mean, they are darkly numinous for sure. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they, they really do call up just this kind of awesome power that yeah. we cannot control. Not at all. I mean, that's why we often describe tornadoes as attacking or assaulting a city. Mm-hmm. And, and just to place it that an enormous tornado has the equivalent of 50 kilotons of explosives, which is two and a half times greater than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. Wow. That the power in a massive mm-hmm. tornado it is truly uh, overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is a darkly numinous uh, and truly awe-inspiring aspect uh, to this, and it's transformative. Uh, transformative in a way that just is horrifying, especially, you know, clips on the news of people the day after who are just devastated. Uh, loss of life, injury, uh, homes and property just laid absolutely waste. Uh, but the power to transform what we invest in and build our homes and schools and hospitals and automobiles of, uh, that we are made to feel puny and we are puny, uh, in, in light of the power of a tornado. Yeah. We, we are, our egos are, Capacity to control, to build things, to make a home. Yeah, it really relativizes the ego, doesn't it? Yes, it does, which is, you know, one of the aspects of the self, uh, which in a way was Jung's term for the divine, for God, uh, is that it has a dark side. Uh, And a tornado really epitomizes this. Um, in a particularly dramatic way. And as that symbol of the divine, it links earth and heaven. Yep. Mm. Both visually, of course it does. Right. But its power, because of its killing and destructive force, mm-hmm. it does you know, translate things into spirit. Mm-hmm. And as such, we think, or we have in the Bible, ascribe the tornado or the whirlwind to the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and that is exactly uh, what, what it says, is that uh, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Exactly. Which was uh, destroying his life, by the way. Yeah. Yes. And, and, you know, and that's what God says, is who are you to question me? Gird up your loins. Be a man. When were you when I, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Of the, There is no dialogue here. No. This is not going to be a reasonable discussion. This is... (laughs) No negotiations here. No negotiations. This is a raw elemental power. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And because it is wind, right? I mean, that's essentially what it is. It's a a rotating Mm -hmm. wind. So it, it is a kind of perfect metaphor for the violent... Uh, assertion of spirit in mm. one's life. It comes out of nowhere, it comes from above, and it, and it brings the, the tremendous force of the wind to bear. It uh, does call to mind this quote from Jung, which we have used before on the podcast, but it's uh, very appropriate now. 
Jung wrote, to this day, God is the name by which I designate all things which cross my willful path violently and recklessly, Mm. all things which upset my subjective views, plans, and intentions, and change the course of my life for better Mm. or worse. So God is a tornado. I think one could make a very good case for that as the most incredible living symbol. I mean, it's one thing to look at a picture of a tornado, Mm. and I'm sure it is very much a a different thing to actually behold that kind of thing. And, And what do we do to stand in front of it? 